In this lesson, we're going to learn how to write a special type of equation called ionic equations. Ionic equations um, are special because they only show the specific ions that are taking part in the reaction. All right. So if we look at the example given, uh, the example um, is an equation for the reaction between an acid and an alkaline which forms salt and water. Right? So in this particular reaction, the actual ions that are undergoing reaction is only the hydrogen ion from the acid and the hydroxide ion from the alkali are reacting to form water. Right? The rest of the ions, they do not take part in the reaction. All right? So how do we reduce a chemical equation to an ionic equation showing only the ions taking part in the, in the reaction. Uh, we do so with a few steps which I'm going to show you next. Now these are the steps you need to follow in order to reduce a chemical equation to its ionic equation. Right, step number one is that you have to write out the balanced chemical equation if it's not already given in the question. Next, in the chemical equation, you are supposed to look out for all the substances, all the compounds that are in aqueous state. All right, so we focus on those that are aqueous. All right, um, we are going to split them into their respective ions. Um, if you can recall, in a, a for ionic compounds. Ionic compounds, they have giant ionic lattice structures. Alright, in the solid state, the ions are actually held in fixed positions. Alright, for example, sodium chloride. Alright, in the solid state, the ions are actually held in fixed positions. So they cannot move. Right, but when you dissolve them in water, right, when you dissolve it in water, the attractive forces, the electrostatic forces of attraction between the sodium and chloride ions have been overcome. And now the ions are simply um, floating around in solution. So Na plus, all right, they are free to move. So we can actually um, split them as shown in this particular equation. Sodium chloride, we can split them into the respective aqueous ions. Now for all other substances that are solid, liquid or gas, we leave them alone. We do not split any substances that are in the gaseous, liquid or solid states. All right. Once we have split the aqueous substances into ions, we need to look out for ions that appear on the left and on the right of the equation and then we cancel them away. Alright, so I'm going to illustrate with an example next. Alright, so this is the example that we're going to illustrate. If we look at the chemical equation, it's already balanced so there's no need for us to do anything. The next step is to locate the substances that are aqueous. So we have HCl, HCl is aqueous. We have sodium hydroxide, which is also aqueous. We have sodium chloride, which is also aqueous. All right, as indicated by their state symbols. Now water is liquid, so we're going to ignore water. We're going to leave it as it is. Now that we have located our aqueous substances, the next thing to do is to split them into their respective ions. So when you have HCl aqueous, we can actually split them into H plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. Remember, once the electrostatic forces of attraction are overcome, these ions are simply floating around as the ions in solution. All right, so same thing, sodium hydroxide, we can split them into Na aqueous 
and OH minus aqueous. And then sodium chloride, we can split it into Na plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. All right, then we move on to step number three. In step number three, we need to look at the ions on the left and on the right. All right, we need to identify ions that appear on both sides of the equation and then we cancel them away. All right, so if we inspect the ions on the left and on the right, you will realize that sodium ion appears on the left and on the right, meaning that it's not taking part in the reaction. All right, same thing for chloride. Chloride appears on the left, it appears on the right, uh, on the right of the equation as well. So it means that it is not taking part in the reaction. So for these ions that do not take part in the reaction, we give them a special name. We call them spectator ions, meaning they, they only sit back and watch the reaction. They do not actually take part in the reaction. All right, so for spectator ions, we can actually cancel them away because they do not appear in the ionic equation. All right, so the ionic equation in writing of the ionic equation, we only need to show the remaining ions and the substances that were not split to start with. All right, so in this case, we have H plus aqueous plus OH minus aqueous forming H2O liquid. All right, so this is how we reduce a chemical equation into an ionic equation. Let us try another example. We will apply the rules uh, for reducing a chemical equation into an ionic equation. So step number one is to write out the balanced chemical equation is already given. Step number two, we need to locate the substances that are in aqueous states. So over here, we have our potassium iodide. We have our potassium chloride. And after locating our substances that are aqueous, the next step is to split them into their respective ions. So you have two potassium ions. You have two iodide ions. On the right, we have also two potassium ions and we have two chloride ions. All right. So again, when we look at chlorine gas, and iodine solid, we leave them alone. We do not split them into anything. All right. So once we have split our aqueous substances into ions, now we need to cancel out the ions that appear on the left and on the right. All right. Essentially, we need to cancel out our spectator ions. And in this case, the spectator ion is the potassium ion. All right. So once we cancel them, there are no other ions that appear on the left and on the right. So the ionic equation is simply Cl2 gas plus 2 iodide aqueous to form 2 Cl minus aqueous and iodine solid. Now the writing of ionic equations is more common to specific reactions. For example, the reactions of acids, right? the metal displacement reactions, halogen displacement reactions, and then precipitation reactions, all of which will be taught in a later chapter. All right. So for this particular equations, actually, there's no need to go through the tedious process that we have learned in this lesson, there are actually simpler methods to writing the ionic equations. All right. So when we reach the respective chapters, I will teach you all how to write the ionic equation in a more simple manner.